and we'll go through with another match grant this summer for 2016. The good news is, as you look at the bottom line, and farmers in our market were paid $13,811 in EBT, which is food stamps. So these are your fees collected and how they're broken down, um, season vendor fees versus walk-on fees. Um, we have a little more walk-on vendors in the market. Uh, their, fa their fees um, are relative to season vendor fees. There's just more repetition of walk-on vendors than season vendors. And these fees are based on um, booth spaces, small faces, spaces, corner spaces, truck spaces, uh, kids, um, all different spaces in the market. These are your total year-end sales reports. This is what a lot of people are very interested in. You can see the top sales in 13, 563,647. Then in 14, it was 1,162,000. 432, and then you get down to 2015, and you have 1,177,391. So that's an estimated, since we do pay tax on food in Idaho, we round that out, and it looks like we could be paying up to $70,643 in state tax. That's not local tax, that's state tax. So then when we look at the final financial recap of the market, we're getting closer um, to cost as far as services paying for themselves. Um, the market revenue for 2015 was $45,000 plus. Um, after um, ex staff expenses and program expenses, um, we are still ahead a little bit. So then you go into indirect costs with other departments in the city and then go get down to total facility expenses, direct and indirect. And we're looking at subsidization of the market at roughly 17954 which is a little bit less than 24000 considerably less than 36945 in 2013. So we're doing a better job with our finances. So these are some of the services that different departments do. I like to give credit to the police because they do come down to the market. They deal with impound and moving cars in the middle of the night, things that we never even see. They help us out with animal control, extra patrols. Legal is here. Rod helps with policy and procedure review for the market. Um, the water department supports us with the drinking fountain, gray water receptacle, and Jackson Street lot. The drinking fountain in the Jackson Street lot. Uh, Carry and engineering is a great help with us with mapping, directional signs. Administration answers the phone when we don't get to the phone. They help a lot with hold harmless press releases and then um, just a lot of different paperwork. Park and Rec is our number one garbage people, which is awesome. They help with fountain maintenance, cleaning of Friendship Square, um, help us with power issues on Friendship Square. And then the street department does a lot of street cleaning. Joe's in the audience, and Joe gets credit for coming down and doing on-site inspections for tent weights, um, fire extinguishers, open flame, flame-proofing tents, and then electrical cords, which is very valuable. And the arts department is pretty busy with the market. So that whole paragraph is what we got going on downstairs, which is great because we're pretty busy. So then I'm just going to close with some of the great shots that photo services from the University of Idaho put together. We've used some of these photos with a video that we just produced, thanks to Zach, for um, a grant and we're hoping that propels us forward. So with that, any questions? Any answers? Dan. Uh, Kathleen, yep. I was going back your daily sheets, I guess. Uh, yep. uh, you, you had about four dogs a day and 18 smokers a day. How many of those are repeats? Um, you know, I'd like to say none because actually we're pretty gentle with our enforcement and once we cite the ordinances and we have little 
quarter page handouts. If we have a problem, that's where the police come in. But in general, we work with kindness a lot, and it seems to be pretty effective. And it's less this past year. Of course, this last year was the first non-smoking market. So unless you were just plain breathing during August. Oh yeah, that yeah. was that was rough. But I think as we deal with uh, tourists coming in, people from out of state, people from out of region, it's an education. And then the other one, uh, you know, we looked at the sales in 13, 14, and 15. We weren't tracking as tight in 2013. We really started that in 14, right? So right. I mean, we could have been right up there with the sales in that one as well. It's, it's kind of a right. hard to, to – it'd be nice to see what 16 does to see how we're – if. And in 16, we're hoping to use the Manage My Market system that we have because they have a portal for recording sales. And then we'll get rid of the paper tracking, and that will speed it up a little bit. Good. Yep. Thanks. I have a question about um, – because the market um, – starts and finishes when school's in session. Is there any outreach to get students involved in part of the volunteering? That's a good question and good comment. So Jessica, current, our current AmeriCorps, has been up um, to U of I to do outreach for um, different fairs that they have, and she is recruiting volunteers. So we do have a volunteer form that they have to fill out and become notarized. And so she's working with getting more volunteers. And then at the high school level, I would think you'd want high, I mean, volunteers that are over 18. So have you thought about the high school? And she has reached out to the high school, yeah. and she's planning to do a presentation at the high school. Oh, great. Yep. Yeah. If there's anything I can do to help. You can get college students out of bed on Saturday morning. That would be great. <laughs> We, we try to get them out of bed. So that's our biggest hurdle on Saturdays. Really? Yeah. yeah. We see them at the end of market, uh -huh. not necessarily at 7 a.m. So, but we're working on it. And then I had another question, too, um, with the numbers, the amount of walk-ons. Mm -hmm. um, if you walk, um, do you, is there any policy that says if you walk on, can you walk on the whole market year? Or if you've, if you've walked on six times, then do you need to, like, flip over into a regular or we, you know, with the commission, we're going to be discussing that, is where do you advance someone from being a walk-on to a seasoned vendor? Yeah. It's hard to be a seasoned vendor because it's a big commitment. Yeah. And they only have two weekends off a season. And they have to be pre, like we have to know about them. So for a lot of walk-ons, it's their introduction into the market. They're growing their business. They're, um, they're growing their business model. They're growing their marketing. Um, so they take it kind of slow. We do have some reoccurring walk-on vendors that we might be considering for season vendors this year okay. from their performance. Difference in the prorated fees if you were a walk-on for the whole season versus a season vendor? Would you wind up paying more if you were a walk-on every single week? Yes. So there's a downside to just being a permanent walk-on. Yes. So we're discussing fees. The Farmers Market Commission, and we're going to, we're going to be discussing that. And then the other last question I have has to do with the nonprofits that are on the yep the speakers wall. Yeah. Um, are you seeing an increase in people that want to be a nonprofit presence, and is there is there a need for more space, or is that something you want to keep to a certain size? Um, that's a good question. We're seeing the area fill up again. It it kind of had a, um, a drop when we went from the Jackson Street lot to Main Street. Yeah. But now it's getting pretty steady again. And so um, we haven't heard from folks that haven't been able to um, table there, um, but we'll be watching that this summer. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Kathleen, do you know when Dr. Peterson's uh, economic in impact study will be finished about the market? What's no, I don't have a date on plan that. Plan is on that. It's no, when he gets it done. They, we just released a survey to the business community, um, so they'll be getting the numbers back from the business survey. Um, he has all our data sets from our previous surveys and um, our reports. So, 
Oh, and I just thought of a last question. Um, I know because a couple people have talked about me. Is the with the cutoff, the other side of the businesses that don't, um, because of Third Street. Mm -hmm. Are you are you all discussing what about liking the size of the market too and all that because of the businesses on that side? You know, feel like they don't necessarily have the same benefit. As We're the discussing business. it, but there hasn't been any um, look at it at expanding. Okay. As yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if they're interested, they need to continue to come to the commission and talk to I them. I think so. Okay. That'd be good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And I'm sorry I sound like a frog, but I'm getting over everybody's cold. So. Yeah. But I'm here. Any other questions? Jim, you haven't signed up to play in the, a band at Friendship Square yet. <laughs> um, it could be a conflict of interest. I'll have to ask Rod about that. Okay. I, I won't be able to ta accept any money for that. I'll have to just uh, give it to the other members of the band. I'll okay. give you my answer later. You might not like it right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you, Kathleen. You're welcome. Thank you.